So mm-hmm. I, I wrote it, so it was, can a reunion relationship ever be more than just a reunion relationship? Oh, ever. Be oh, nice. ever. Ever. Ever be more than that. What, what is that? Well, like you have a long-term relationship, is it always just going to be this reunion, or is it, can it proceed beyond that? So, so I've been in reunion 25 years. And, um, the question is, can a reunion relationship ever be more than that? More than a reunion yeah. relationship. So like a mother-child relationship, is that what you mean? Right. A family, somebody entering into a family. Right. So, you know, I think on the whole, my, I've been in reunion 25 years, but I think that's an exception. I don't know that um, a lot of reunions make it very far, right? Some are just very short, some are meetings, some are here, because there's so many differences that we encounter, right? Socioeconomic differences, religious differences, all sorts of things. So that you have to really want that relationship to be able to not focus on the things that are different, but the things that you want. Um, I, I, I think when my adoptive parents were alive, um, I, I always had my birth mother in my life, but since they've passed, and my mother was very um, threatened by my birth mom, um, it's allowed me to have her even more into my life. She lives in Las Vegas now, so she comes and visits for a month at a time. She'll stay with me, and I love that. It's, it's just it's great. And I feel very much like I'm part of that family, and I still have my very large adoptive family, except for my parents. So I, for me, it's a really nice balance. For my birth mom, though, um, one of the things that has hurt her, and she has said it since the day that we've met, is that I don't call her mom. And I don't call her mom because my mom would have, if she heard me say it now, she'd be rolling over in her grave. Um, it just hurt her something terribly, so I've never been able to do that. But for my birth mom, I think that's one thing that she thinks keeps us a little bit separate. She Last time she stayed with me, she left me a note, which she's very non-demonstrative <laughs> that way, but she left me a note about how much she loves me and and, but that it still really hurt her. She wished I could call her mom. And I reacted with feeling really upset about that. Like, isn't it enough that you know, we're together and we have each other and you come stay with me and that I love you? And So I think for each person, it's, it's different. Um, I feel like we're totally one big family. And I think we are, but there's you know, differences for each person. So I don't know if that kind of answers your question or not. Yeah, well, kind of, because I've been with my daughter for a long time, too, and she always introduces me as her mom, but she doesn't call me mom, Yeah. and then that kind of, yeah. and it's not yeah. really, ooh, it's separation, and I don't get upset about it, but I'm aware of it, Yes. because when too. I'm with my son, I'm mom. When yeah. he, when we're all together, she avoids calling me anything, yeah. and he's calling me mom, yeah. you know? So, I mean, you're just aware of it, and yeah. it's like, you know, and even my granddaughter, She's your mom. Why don't you call her mom? You know, so father's my granddaughter. Yeah. So it's just like, and I, I, I don't, I don't want to go there. I really don't want to go there, but I'm aware of it. Yeah, and it may be more about something like I'm talking about. It's semantic that is supposed to be for one person, and and my mom again was very very threatened. So she used to say things like, "Tracy, that's my square, and I don't want anybody else in that square." There is, you know, and I was like, "Okay, well, I do have a birth mom. I come from someone." So, but for her, that was so impossible. But the, that thing with me and my mom has impacted my birth mom and I. Well, and the same with my daughter because she no longer has a relationship with her adoptive mother. They were just like this. And that mom is a very negative word or term for her. So there's that part of it, too. I also, when I refer to my birth mom, I say mom, or if I'm talking to my sister, I'll say mom, but it's just the actual calling her that I get hung up on. Exactly. It's tricky. But I still love her. It doesn't mean any, I I love her less. It's just that is, you know. Exactly. That's hard. Then there is my daughter and my daughter's birth mom's daughter, who calls us both mom. Mm -hmm. And if we're all together, it's very confusing sometimes. (laughs) She'll say, Mom, and we both turn around, you know. Or she'll say, my mom, this. she's telling somebody some story about Mom, and I'm thinking, gee, I don't know 
remember that. <laughs> and then I have to realize, oh, she's not talking about me, you know. But, um, I mean, it's fine. And I, we, we have this extended family that just gets together, you know, for all kinds of things, including the, the birth of our grandson. Both moms were there, um, as well as my, my other daughter and the baby's daddy and the new the doula. And <laughs> the place was full. Um, and it was a wonderful experience. But um, I guess, you know, not every family can do that, although I think more of them could do that, because it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier when the adopted person doesn't have to try to take care of everybody's feelings. You know, that's not their job. And so, um, so we just wing it, you know, when we're together. And, and she calls us both mom, and we both turn around, and I, as I say, when, <clears throat> when BJ comes to um, Thanksgiving, I always have her make mashed potatoes because mine tastes like glue, mm -hmm. and hers are nice and fluffy. Anyway, you know, you, <laughs> it's, it just is a lot easier if everybody gets along and everybody can um, just know that, as we said before, there's not never too many people loving you. Yeah, and I think, because um, I, I said earlier, I work with children, and one of the things that I educate adoptive parents about is that child has a right to call their birth mother whatever they want to call her, and we need to respect that, that and give them permission that they know they have that right. And, you know, we're, you're, we're, t we're talking about a generation that didn't have this treatment, that didn't have this intervention, Parents are understanding more and more today because I think adoptees, in their hearts, they want to call. They want to have that connection. You are my mom. But they're scared. Like she was saying, you know, they've been given the message. You don't go there. We're your parents. Um, we're mom and dad. But I call my birth mother. She's my mother. <laughs> There's no question about it, okay? And I did have a different experience. I did live with her for 15 months. So I did have a relationship with her. And then I went into foster care. And then I went into another family to be adopted. That's my right to call her. But I think it's also a right for any adoptee. And I work with adoptees who have had that, you know, at birth disruption. And they want to call their birth mother mom. And they can feel from their adoptive parents how hard it is, but in my Adopt Salon support groups where the triad is there, we talk about it. You know, the adoptee has a right, and we need to respect that. And the adoptee needs to hear that. They have rights, because our rights were taken away from us in many fashions, as you saw in the film today. Um, we need to be given permission, too. And then we feel more open to be a, a normalcy. I was just thinking, it's like, how do we make it a normal relationship so it doesn't have this awkwardness to it? It's creating a normalcy. And that's going to take time in any relationship. Um, and it's about building trust. And trust takes time, especially with the adoptees. <laughs> trust takes time. Mm -hmm. Because we're all so scared. Well, this is the core. If I call you mom, are you really going to stay? There's just this part, and I always talk in parts to adoptees. There's a part of us that just doesn't believe that you're going to stay. We're going to say one mo wrong thing. We're going to slip, and you're going to run away again. We're so hypersensitive. We really are. I mean, I had an ad adult adoptee yesterday. She goes, Jeanette, we have special needs. <laughs> it's like we have special needs. We're so hypersensitive, uh, afraid of facilitating, creating another abandonment. We'll do anything to stop that from happening. So we become very other-oriented. I'll do what you want. Tell me to jump. How high? Because I, I need you. Um, and that's what happens with the adoptee and their adoptive parents. I'll do exactly what you say because I need you for my security. So it's hard to juggle that. But I, you can see, I don't, I don't keep quiet. And I tell parents, I've got to let them 
call her whatever they choose, and we need to respect it. If it's mother, if it's mom, let's respect that. <coughs> I yeah. agree with that, and, and you know, um, I, I talk to adoptive parents, new adoptive parents, a lot of the time, and I'm, I must say, some of them are beginning to get it, you know, and um, listening to what we say about every, they can call them whatever they want, and also um, about the permission. I, they, it, it's nice if they have permission. But another thing, another way to put it to these parents is, you know, you can have more than one child and love them all. So why is it so scary to have your child have another mother that they also love? Um, and I know part of that has to do with the fact that bonding is going to be different. You're not going to have that same kind of bonding with the adoptive parent as you have with your biological mother. But um, you can still have a very close connection. I mean, my daughter and I have a wonderful relationship, but I think it got even more wonderful after she met her birth mom, because that was not this magical person anymore. She was a, a normal person who loved her and really wanted her in her life, but there wasn't all this mystery around her, you know, and I got to know her. I mean, my daughter kind of forced that on us because she asked me if I'd pick up her mother at the airport. <laughs> now this was the second time she was going to meet her, but she had to work. So she said, "Mom, can you pick her up at the airport?" So I did, and I brought her home, and, and we had several hours before my daughter got off work. You know, I showed her all the albums, and, and we were still living in the same house. I'm still living in the same house where the kids were two and four when we moved there. And so, you know, she got a pretty. I, I might have been overwhelming for her, I think. But um, <coughs> but we got to know each other pretty well that day, and I think that set us off on a good a good start. My daughter was good at that, you know, because the first time she talked to her birth mom, she said she talked to her father for about an hour. Then she had to go to work again, <laughs> um, and she so she hands the phone to me and and to her birth mom. She says, "Here, talk to my mom. You'll like her." <laughs> <laughs> and so we talked for a little while, and the first thing I said to her was, you know, I feel as if I know you already because I've been living with your daughter for 25 years. You know, so that kind of broke the ice, I think, you know. But as I say, you know, my daughter can love us both, and she does, and she also gets mad at us, especially when we conspire. Um, you know, like, we don't want her to ride her motorcycle. <laughs> she does it anyway. 